right, you guys, Vogue just announced that their spring collection is out. So, First Impression Friday is going out to the new Vogue Spring Collection. Very exciting. So let's jump right in and take a look at these new patterns. Now, if you saw my Big Four rebranding video that I posted, I have no concept of time, earlier this week, um, then you know kind of what to expect when we come to Vogue. We're looking for the designer pieces, the couture pieces, the ones that are going to be like special occasion, you know what I'm saying? So this is not necessarily going to be your everyday wardrobe, but we should still find some pieces in here that we adore, admire, love, can see ourselves wearing at different times, maybe not like an everyday type of thing, unless, you know, you're like a Fifth Avenue socialite or something like that. And who knows who watches these videos, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> okay, but our very first one is a Tom and Linda plait pattern. Now, I have made a Tom and Linda plait dress before, um, and I really, really love it. Does anybody remember the one that had the three different color ponties? It was like a burgundy dress, but it had like a teal stripe and like a an orange stripe or a pink stripe. I can't remember what the other pink maybe. Um, that was a Tom and Linda plait um, design. So they always have really unique kind of asymmetrical angular type of design. So this one is a jacket and dress. Um, it's described as a Mrs. Loose fitting unlined asymmetric jacket. Wrong side will show. This is the wrong side here and here has raglan sleeves, close fitting lined dress, has asymmetric princess seams, side hem flounce with slit, invisible back zipper, and they both have stitched hems. All right, let's take a closer look. Um, so the jacket is this piece here that goes around the neck and then has this waterfall only on one side and is significantly longer on one side as well. The sleeves are coming up a little bit short on her. That could just be a fit model thing though. Um, you've got the raglan sleeve and it's a little bit like grown on the neck or the collar um, is. So that's a really nice detail for spring because it's open but it's still higher up on the neck so it's a little bit warm you know what I'm saying. Um, okay so here is the asymmetric uh, princess seams that they were talking about. It's really just one princess seam goes all the way to the hem and one doesn't. Um, how this is constructed, I am very curious about. And then you have the one side flounce that they mentioned as well. The neckline is kind of like a slit, a uh, boat neck, bateau, however you want to um, phrase it and then the shoulder actually is really nice too because you can barely tell but it cuts in just a little bit but it seems to have like lots of nice ease to it and I mean this fuchsia color with her red hair and like orangey red lipstick is just so so stunning okay so here's our first picture of the back zooming in we can see that the raglan sleeve actually comes up. Well, is that the raglan? I'm trying to visualize it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this is how it looks in the front and in the back. But the back actually has like a collar. It's not grown on like it is in the front. So it's sewn on here. Here's your raglan sleeve. Beautiful, I think flat felt stitches maybe. Maybe. Um... Here is the dress, beautiful uh, pr uh, princess seams in the back as well. You can see, let's see, can we, yeah. Um, the asymmetrical uh, princess seams match the front. Um, this one comes down and becomes this little flounce thing and the other one goes all the way down to the hem. You also have a center back zip, invisible zipper. It's a little bit loose fitting, you know, for her, but um, certainly plenty of wearing ease there. I think she might just be a little bit smaller busted than the pattern calls for. That said, though, it does look really pretty in the front. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe she just has like a narrower back, but 
Either way, really beautiful, right? Super, super pretty. Um, easily, you could come up with a million different places to wear this pre-pandemic. Um, but post-pandemic, you know, you wear it to a, a wedding, a night wedding, or maybe some special kind of church service, or I don't know, like any kind of event that is um, conservative, but still a little bit fun. The flounces and the asymmetry all give me like a really fun, fun vibe. So yeah, so this is what I was trying to explain earlier, how the raglan sleeves kind of come up and then they become this kind of collar piece. These pattern pieces have to be so interesting to see them all flat. And look, there's even like a high hip seam too that I missed uh, in the pictures. Your yardage. Okay, so they're recommending wool crepe. Ponty knit, ooh, really good in Ponty. Ponty is so accessible for the home sewer as well. Very affordable. Um, or wool flannel. You'll also need interfacing and then lining for the dress. One invisible zipper and then one hook and eye closure. The sizes are eight to 16 and then 16 to 24. And then for the jacket, we're only gonna look at 60 inch fabric and no more than three and a half yards, depending on what size you need. The dress is less than two yards. Um, and then the lining for the dress is a little bit more than the dress itself. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but just a quarter yard more. Maybe you need some of the lining for the coat. I'm not sure. No, they would have said that. I don't know why. And then you're interfacing for the dress is one and an eighth yard. This jacket's gotta be very simple to put together. No finished garment measurements that really help. Oh, no finished garment measurements at all. Okay, listen, I have said before that I would rather see none than see the ones that are unhelpful. So there you have it. <laughs> Okay, next up we've got 1775. This is a Badgley Mishka. We've got a designer, um, a designer dress in here. It's described as Mrs. Close Fitting, partially lined dress, has deep v-neck with sheer front inset, waist tie sewn at center back, and invisible back zipper. Raw edge finish on ties and sleeve hem. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I guess you could hem it. I don't see why not. Either way, let's look at the pictures. So it's basically a fitted sheath dress with a set-in sleeve, possibly a shoulder pad. We'll look at that in the notions. There is a bust dart. Now this one is all sorts of funky. I'm not entirely sure what is up with this super pointy bus dart. It's a little bit long and a little bit high. Um, and then you also have this little lace inset, which is just really, really beautiful. Um, it's definitely, you know, not modest and not for every body type, but it does give you that little bit of comfort and coverage, but still a little bit of something, something, you know what I'm saying? I think if I say, you know what I'm saying? One more time in this video, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I'm going to stop saying that now. I don't know why it's on my mind. Um, anyways, okay, so you have your little tie belt. I want to see a picture of the back of that. These are your raw hem sleeves, but the dress is hemmed. And obviously the neckline has its own finishing of some kind. So we'll see if they give us any clues about why that is. Here is the back. Take a look at all of this. Okay. So we've got a center back zip. Um, I don't know if this is her undergarment. I don't know what that bumpy stuff is there. But the, the belt is sewn into the zipper seam. You also have this little dart here. And then a very close fitting situation. Uh, I can't tell if that is a kick pleat or not. 
wow, is that all we're going to get for pictures? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, we're going to go back and look at that dart because it actually comes from the waist, which that is not what I saw at all. Um, and then there is a little slit here, more so than a kick pleat. Do y'all see that coming from? I guess it goes like this. So more so from the side seam. Yeah, I guess that's right. So it's still a little bit long. You know, it should stop somewhere around here. So that's something to look for if you are making this pattern. Not many pictures on this one. Okay, so fabrics are neoprene scuba is the only fabric. Because it's a designer dress, they take a ready-to-wear Badgley Mishka design and they basically copy and paste it. Um, so whatever fabric the sample that they get is made from, that's the one that's recommended. That's probably also why nothing is hemmed. Um, contrast one is laced. Contrast two is stretch mesh. Contrast two, there is no contrast two. So I don't know what that means. And then it's either, yeah, it's partially lined. And then they have moderate stretch knit, 35% crosswise. I'm not sure what that applies to. That's confusing the way this is written out. Uh, one 22 inch invisible zipper and one hook and eye closure. The sizes are 8 to 16 and 16 to 24. So there aren't shoulder pads. This is just the way the neoprene kind of sits. And I imagine that's contributing a lot to the bust start issue as well. Oh, this is the bow. The bow is contrast too, which they just didn't indicate that in the, um, in the illustration. That's a little bit of an error there. So this is some kind of like stretch mesh, which makes sense that that's not hemmed. But I don't see why you couldn't hem the sleeve the same way you've done the skirt. I, I don't know. I don't get that. But here are your fabric requirements, two and a half yards for the dress, one and a half yards lining, and you're done. I got to imagine this is fairly simple to put together. I would challenge yourself to try and picture it not in black. Black to me very much says like evening. Um, but if you made it in like a fuchsia color, if you made it in bright yellow, I mean, scuba knits come in a gajillion different colors. So you could do something daytime appropriate even, um, and still be really, really lovely. This with the, with the, Deep V and all of that, I'm still picturing it as a sort of special event, but not necessarily black tie. All right, next up, we've got another Badgley Mishka, but these are great because you get high-end designer looks that, like, people are paying thousands of dollars for, and you can make them at home. It's really, really an amazing sort of service that is available to us home sewists. I mean, you could make an exact, like, knockoff. No one would ever know. They tell you exactly what fabric to make and everything. Um, so, but this one is uh, Mrs. Close Fitting Partially Lined Dress has asymmetric draped front with fringe trim and invisible back zipper. So, Clearly, asymmetry is a thing. Fringe has been kind of lurking in the background of the trends uh, here for the past couple of seasons. I've been surprised to not see it more in home sewing because as a trimming, it's pretty easy to find and pretty easy to sew. Um, but nonetheless, here it is in the form of V1776. Uh, the dress. Let's take a look top to bottom. So we've got a little uh, necklace. Um, we've got like a little crew neck or I don't know if that's like slightly rounded neckline. You've got a set in sleeve. 
Um, this one is hemmed. Then you've got this overlay of fabric that comes together in this little twisty knot thing. Now we've seen the twisty knot thing for a couple of years now. Um, this one is just applied as an overlay. And then the end of the overlay, kind of like as a scarf, comes down and your, oh God, what is this, 12 or 14 inch fringe is sewn onto the hem of that piece. Really cool design. Um, definitely a standout piece. This to me doesn't even necessarily have to be a special occasion. I mean, maybe in a pandemic it does, but I mean, I could see this out for drinks with your girlfriends, um, a really great date night, you know, something like that. But here's the back, beautiful uh, fisheye darts, center back seam, stunning. Just a basic straight across hem, no pleat, no nothing. Just a straight hem across the back. Really, really nice. Do y'all hear, honey? She's trying to play with me, but we're working. Okay, this one is made from, oh, it's so confusing. Fabrics, and it says lining, lightweight jersey, four-way stretch knits with 75%. 75% cross grain stretch spandex. So is that the lining or the self fabric? Sometimes I think that they release these patterns before like their editor, their website editor has had a chance to come in and like figure things out. I'm not sure. I don't know what that means. I think that, I think that the main fabric is lightweight Jersey and then the lining is, Oh, who knows? Who knows? Um, you need your invisible zipper, hook and eye closure, and 13 inch front, uh, 13 inch fringe. Alphanumeric sizing, extra small to medium, and then large to extra large. Uh, up to two and a half yards, we'll call it. And then one and a quarter yards of lining fabric. Still very similar silhouettes so far. All three of them, I mean, not excluding the top, the jacket, but... The, this dress, this black dress, and this white dress all have these sort of close-fitting sheath-style designs. This one, however, <laughs> is definitely not that. Not that in any way. Okay. And this is a in-house design. So they've designed this in-house with their in-house designer. It's described as Mrs. Close Fitting Through Bust has puff sleeves with sleeve head, princess seaming, godets, invisible back zipper, purchase bias neck facing, sleeve slit opening with hook and eye closure and length variations. I genuinely have no idea where you would wear this other than some kind of prom. And even then, I don't think the kids these days you know, that are going to a prom or cotillion or anything like that are wearing anything close to a sleeve like that. That is, this is a very, very special sleeve. Maybe some of the other links will give us less costume vibes, but take a look at everything we've got going on here. So ignoring the sleeve for just a second, look at these seams. So you've got this one that comes down here. We'll see it better in the line drawing too, but you've also got this one You've got a center front seam, and then it's mimicked on the other side. Then, look at this one. Stunning. I mean, all of this is creating this super fitted look that flares out without a waist seam. It's kind of incredible. It really is. You can see it really well in this view, in this picture. Look at all those seams. Each and every one of them goes down into a seam that becomes a godet. And godets are like these little insets that are put in and create a very flary skirt. You can also see the sleeve slit here with a hook and eye closure at the end. I mean, just really something else. You can really see the sleeve head here. Yeah, this one's wild. I don't think she likes it very much, but I do think that the redhead really likes it. So pretty, so pretty. I mean, all this seeming is just genuinely so incredible. I don't think the shorter length makes it any less 
avant-garde. To, in, in my opinion, this is very avant-garde. I mean, where are you going in a sleeve like that? This makes, remember when we were talking about the McCall sleeves and how like just super trendy they were? This just takes the cake. Carlos, their in-house designer said, oh yeah, Jackie, the McCall's designer, he said, oh yeah, Jackie, you think you got big sleeves? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to one-up you. And he did. And he definitely did something else. Look at this. Now, imagine this dress without the sleeve and you did a little sleeveless number. How stunning would that be? Imagine if you color blocked some of this stuff, right? If you did like an ombre effect or something. I mean, you guys, this could be a work of art. It could be a work of art for sure. Incredible. Now, brace yourselves for how much fabric this is going to take. <laughs> um, fabrics are Mikado, which I've actually never heard of before. Linen, poplin, and broadcloth. Sleeve head, like inside the sleeve head to keep it puffy, you need some taffeta or netting or something to you like ball it up in there kind of. So there is a close fitting lined sleeve and then the sleeve that you see on the outside is what's all poofy and then in between those two, sandwiched in between those two, is this taffeta or netting. Um, you need one 22 inch zipper, two hook and eye closures, and half inch single fold bias tape for the neckline just wild. Okay, dress A takes four yards of fabric and dress B, the longer one, almost eight. Almost eight yards. And then you need one and a quarter yards or up to one and a quarter yards for the sleeve head stuffing stuff. Yeah, something else. That one I'll remember for sure. Look at this cute little number. This is another in-house design. This is Mrs. Fitted Sleeveless Jumpsuit has lined to edge bodice. Lined to edge bodice. Raised neck, attached lined capelet, invisible front zipper, and leg variations. Okay. I was just watching something. Oh, maybe one of Meghan Markle's. She's been on TV so much. Um, she was doing these capelet things a lot when she was part of the royal family. But interesting that the capelet is sewn into the invisible zipper, though, right? Not just like a separate piece over top. But the capelet actually has some version of a princess seam here. Um, it does go up on the neck a little bit. You've got princess seams in the jumpsuit, a waistband. And then those seams come down. So these are more like darts. Your zipper stops around here somewhere. And then a fairly wide leg with a, I don't know, one inch hem or so. Here it is with a slimmer leg cropped. This might be a little bit different too, right? This feels a little bit more swoopy. Um, it's also, you can see the lining in there a little bit. I'm dying to see the back. Okay, so the back is similar to the front with the seaming on the capelet. Similar seaming everywhere, really. Just no center back seam. Yeah, the fit is incredible. Did I do that? Here's the back on the green one. Super good fit. All right, here are our line drawings. Yeah, I just don't know like where where we're wearing this. I guess same as last, the last one with like dinner with the friends, date night, something like that. Anniversary, I guess. But to me, this also could be a daytime look too. It's interesting. Okay, here's the 
yardage. So fabrics are stretch woven, crepe, satin, stretch wovens like crepe or satin, I think is what they're trying to say, interfacing, and then a lining fabric. All you need is a zipper. 8 to 16 and 16 to 24 on the size range. And then yardage, you need two and three quarter yards for the slim leg and three yards for the fuller leg. Lining, you need one and a half yards. And interfacing, you need one and three eighths of a yard. Of, oh, they don't give the, oh, 20 inch width um, interfacing. Interesting. Cute take on a, on the jumpsuit flight suit situation. All right, now we've got another jumpsuit. Did anybody instantly think of Whitney Houston? What what performance was it where she was in the white suit and her hair was really short like this? Uh, okay, Mrs. Self Lined. Oh, this is a Guy LaRoche design as well. Not as famous of a designer as Badgley Mishka, but he has been with Vogue for a minute um, and always has interesting designs as well. Kind of like maybe like edgy. Um, okay, Mrs. Self-Lined One Shoulder Jumpsuit has asymmetric neckline. One Shoulder Jump... Self-Lined One Shoulder Jumpsuit? I'm seeing two... Definitely two shoulders. I don't know what that means. Has asymmetric neckline, French darts, invisible side zipper, one-piece sleeves with invisible zipper in the sleeves? Bolero jacket... Attached to jumpsuit at center back has shoulder pad and two piece sleeves. What? <laughs> what is happening? It's a one shoulder jumpsuit and half of a jacket. That's what that's what they're telling us. So one shoulder, right? You've got your jumpsuit, waist seam, darts like usual. This thing is half of a jacket. And there are little invisible zippers in the sleeves normal hem maybe a little bit of a deep hem but normal hem oh my goodness okay and then that half jacket attaches in here somehow two piece sleeve on the jacket one piece sleeve on the jumpsuit Decent-ish fit on the pant and bodice, for that matter. Yeah, even the line drawings don't really do it that much justice in explaining what the heck is actually going on here. Let me read how that is attached again. Bolero jacket attached to jumpsuit at center back. So you sew it into the seam... So it always has to be worn. It just, you could take your arm out if you wanted and and have a one shoulder. I'm just, my mind is like spinning. I don't even know what to make of this. I think I like it. <laughs> okay. Interfacing nylon fusible knit. Fabrics are lightweight crepe, rayon blends, or silk broadcloth. One zipper, one hook and eye, one half inch shoulder pad for the jacket, one five inch invisible zipper for the one sleeve, and five eighths of a yard of one eighth inch satin ribbon. No idea what that's for. Obviously to tie something closed somewhere, I guess. Who knows? What an interesting design, right? 8 to 16 and 16 to 24. After making the Whitney Houston comparison, I can really only see this as like a performance look for some kind of like pop star. Do you know what I mean? Like, where, I guess you could essentially wear this just about anywhere because it is, it kind of reads as like, you know, a jumpsuit with just long sleeves. But when you get down to it and see how funky it is, 
you realize that it really does deserve like a special, special place. You need six and a quarter yards, up to six and a quarter yards to pull this guy off. Because it's self-lined also. Don't forget that part. Wild. Some good memorable looks here. You know, you guys are always saying, so boring. I've seen it a thousand times. Give me something new. Well, here it is, right? All right, so this is another in-house design. No, I'm sorry, Rachel Comey. Rachel Comey, this is actually, now that I've read that, this is very Rachel Comey. She, her designs are, the reason why I know this is hers is because it's not super fitted. Uh, I associate her stuff with, with like looser fitting, modern kind of designs. Um, Mrs. Loose Fitting Partially Lined Pullover Dress has drop shoulders, short sleeves with turn back cuffs, bust starts, waistline, pleats, and welt pockets. So this is one of those things that Vogue is calling it easy, but easy for Vogue is probably like moderate to advanced for others. Um, let's look at the pictures. Starting at the top, you've got a, it's like a collar, but without a collar stand. So it is relatively simpler collar design, drop shoulder, and then a little cuffed sleeve. You've got a crossover bodice. I'd be surprised if there weren't some kind of like snap or something in here. Um, you've got your waist seam and then all of these like super deep pleats and then a welt pocket put here in the side. It is midi length, so it comes down past the knee, super deep um, hem, probably two inches, maybe more. And then I love that they just paired it with a simple twisty flat of the same color, monochromatic. Here's the back. It just has a center back seam. Again, loose, relaxed, modern, clean. Those are the kind of probably keywords of Rachel, Rachel Comey's uh, design team. <laughs> Here are our line drawings. Honestly, when I first saw it, I thought that it was uh, a jumpsuit also because this uh, center pleat goes inward. Um, so I thought that those were pants, but they're not. Yardage is crepe, wool flannel, lightweight denim. Yeah, I would definitely stick with something solid, collared. I don't know that I would go with a, or at least like minimal print, you know, nothing too, too bold. It is a simple design though. So maybe some of those prints that you don't want to break up too much, uh, you, this would be a good design for that. Alphanumeric sizing, no notions. And up to three and a half yards. For the fashion fabric, one and three eighths of lining and just a little bit, a little less than a yard of feasible interfacing. Okay, now we've got this guy, definite throwback to the 70s, right? Mrs. Dress and Belt has fitted bodice, stand collar, raised waist, A-line skirt with inverted front pleat, patch pockets, Purchase trim, separate pattern pieces for the cup sizes. In-house design. Okay. So, oh, actually really cool collar. So it's definitely a stand collar. It's just kind of exaggerated and taller than usual. Um, this, all this ribbon is the purchase trim that they're talking about. I'm assuming that's just like a grow grain ribbon. You've got these pockets, again, with the ribbon detail and the button, love that. Then you've got, I'm not entirely sure how this comes together. I think it's buttons and loops, maybe? I don't know, that's just me guessing. Um, you've got your belt, and then you've got other pockets here. The print matching on these pockets is exemplary. Kudos. Then you've got, maybe this is a faux closure. Maybe that's what it is. Because you've got this inverted pleat here. And I just don't know how you'd sew a zipper into that. 
So this might be a faux closure and then in the back you have an invisible zipper or something. This mitered corner on the ribbon is not for the faint of heart, but it is a very, very chic look. This is kind of giving me like airline stewardess vibes a little bit. These are a little bit long and too far in possibly. Shorter length on this one. Yeah, okay. And then here's your invisible zipper in the back. So that's how you get in and out of it. The front is just, those but those are not working buttons. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, this could be an everyday look. Um, you could definitely, you know, go out to do something special in it. But you could also run errands in it. Imagine it in like a chambray denim or something like that. Um... You could wear it to office, the office if you still go to an office. A concert, um, well, maybe not like a rock concert, but some kind of like music event or something like that um, when we start doing those again. It's pretty wearable. It's pretty everyday. But it's all the details that go into it that make it what it is. All right, sateen for sure. Linen, ponte, and lightweight denim. You also need interfacing and lining fabric. 11 buttons, one zipper, three hook and eyes, seven eighths inch grain ribbon, a buckle for the belt, and eyelets for the belt as well. 8 to 16, 16 to 24 on the sizing, up to two and a half yards for the shorter version, up to three and five eighths for the longer version and then lining and interfacing. Okay, now we've got this look getting a little more casual. This is real cute. This is Mrs. Loose Fitting Pullover Dress has deep V-neck collar extending into ties in the back collar into ties okay forward shoulder seams long sleeves ending in cuffs with button and loop closure and then hemline variations okay i am obsessed with this exaggerated curve with the little bust pleat sewn into it uh, you've got a facing here to finish off the neckline and then you've got this collar that supposedly turns into something here is how the cuff is constructed love that this is like a 70s detail for sure but it's very subtle and then a baby hem on this one. Oh, asymmetric hem okay same detail with the cuffs here um, just an asymmetric hem. I think it's the same all around. I don't see this as a, um, a heel dress at all. I mean, of course you can, I guess because this is maybe like some kind of like silk-ish, maybe they thought, I don't know. I would like a prettier sandal flat with it though. This version though, for sure with a heel. Okay, so this is the back that they're talking about, and I guess this is how you get in and out of it. I love this. I love this dress. I am for sure adding it to my list. The next time there's a Vogue sale, follow me on Instagram if you want to know when those are going down. Yeah, I really, really like this. It's totally how you get into it. There's a little hook and eye, and then you cover it up with um, the bow at the back. I would make both versions in a second in a second. I love the cuff. I love how there's like a seam here to give you that side volume, but also this exaggerated thing here, plus the center front seam. I just love the whole thing. The whole thing. I would wear that to death. So cute. Forward shoulder extends into this two-piece sleeve. So good. 
Okay. Crepe silk twill poplin lightweight linen are the fabrics they're recommending. I actually see it in a crinkle rayon, which I know you guys are like Lindsay with the crinkle rayon, my God. But <laughs> this reminds me of crinkle rayon a little bit. Right? Um, but I think it would be equally stunning in something a little bit more structured like the poplin or lightweight linen would be really great too. Maybe gauze would be nice. Um, and then you need two buttons. These are, that's for the cuff, uh, hook and eye closure for the back and single fold bias tape. Not entirely sure where the bias tape goes, but nonetheless, it's in there somewhere. Alphanumeric sizing, extra small to medium, large to, X, to 2X, large to 2X. And then three and five eighths yards for the shorter one, almost five yards for the long asymmetrical hem one. So look for a good bargain, fabric.com clearance, something like that um, to try this out. Make sure you love it before you spend some good money on that fabric. All right, next up, another really beautiful casual number here. Um, In-house, Mrs. Button Front Dress and Belt Fitted Through Bust has collar and collar band dropped shoulders, bell sleeves, princess seams, ending in released pleats, side seam pockets, and length variations. Okay. So, cute little dress silhouette. I can't say I love the three-quarter length bell sleeve, especially in this stable fabric, but the idea of princess seams being released into pleats, I can really get behind. The idea this is a shirt dress, um, with like the shirt dress with attitude, <laughs> um, you've got your, you know, stand collar. Um, oh, is this like a PK cotton? Wow. I haven't seen that in a long time. Um, so you've got like your actual, you know, real collar here. This isn't any kind of like simplified collar. Um, yeah, that's really that's really it. Here's the longer version. I do like this sleeve a little bit better. It's just a little bit more narrow. That last one was um, just the fabric so stiff that it just really stands away from the body. But it would also be really cute to just finish off the sleeve or the arm side without a sleeve. This fabric is really something else, stars and moons. But you can see how pretty the stand collar is here. Long length, I gotta imagine this takes more than five yards. Cute as a knee length too though. Let's see the back, there we go. Center back seam and then your same um, darts that release and depletes. So sewn together, sewn together, sewn together, and then you backstitch and then that becomes your flared skirt. There are inseam pockets as well. Yeah, I think just in general, I like it in a more drapey fabric, personally. Makes it a little more fussy to sew, but this is also, when you look at it in the line drawing, it looks like a um, church choir robe, doesn't it? Especially with the big sleeve. Okay. Yardage. Satin, PK, broadcloth. Or not satin, sateen. Interesting that they didn't, I don't know what fabric this is, but this isn't one of those. This is definitely something drapier. Uh, maybe like a rayon poplin or something. I mean, I guess that could be a lightweight sateen. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Um, and then interfacing, 10 buttons or 13 buttons, depending on the length. And then, wow, okay, so the shorter version takes almost five yards and the longer version takes more than seven. Not surprising, but that's how you get this really beautiful swooshy look. It takes the fabric, you know? All right, now moving into our tops. Mrs. Shirt and Belt, loose fitting shirt and belt has collar and collar band, deep yoke, fly front, fly front. Hmm, fly front? Maybe they mean button front. 
two-piece lantern shaped sleeves ending in button cuffs. Okay, so again, your traditional collar. They must have just used a shirting for this. They actually used contrast fabric for the belt is more of a plaid, not a stripe. And same for the bottom of the lantern. And then of course you've got the high-low hem. And then I think that the only thing keeping this cinched in at the waist is this belt. If you did not have the belt on, it would be more voluminous, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like that's definitely a look too. You know what I mean? I can see it with like, like apparel leggings and then just like a really voluminous top, especially with the high-low hem. but really pretty with the flare leg also. Here's the super deep yoke. Okay, great example. This is what I mean. This is what it looks like without the belt. It's still kind of cool. It's kind of like you're wearing your dad's button down or your husband's or your boyfriend's or whoever's. You know what I'm saying? Like it kind of gives me that vibe. I like it a lot. I like it. as an alternative to a shirt dress. I think it's really cute. You could also lengthen the front and have a shirt dress. That wouldn't be hard at all to lengthen this to be the same length as the, um, as the back. But the deep yoke is really the one, the deep yoke and the lantern sleeve, I guess, together are what make this like a unique-ish shirt design. It's kind of cool without the belt, right? Just give that a thought. All right, cotton shirting, linen, poplin. You need some interfacing and buttons. All the sizes are in one. Extra small to extra large. Two and five eighths yard for the shorter one. Oh, and then the, they do call out the contrast fabric. Okay, they're, I don't know why they're not doing that in the line art anymore. Oh, they are. Okay, here it is. Okay, I missed it, I'm sorry. Very good. And then for the um, shirt, and it's all one fabric, it's three and one eighths yards. And then three quarters of a yard of interfacing. All right, now we've got one. This is Marcy Tilton, which again, her stuff is very identifiable, not only by the asymmetry of everything, but also the mixing of prints and fabric. She does that with almost everything. Um, lots of layers, lots of, you know, interesting stuff here. But this is described as loose fitting, asymmetric shirt, have layered collar, tuck details, left side pocket, stitched hems. So you only get one pocket. <laughs> which is interesting. You get like a double layered collar. It's like tacked down here, but folded away here, kind of like origami a little bit. Um, you've got your button front with stripes going this way, stripes going that way, stripes on the bias, um, little stripes, big stripes. You know what I'm saying? Like you've, I just did it again. You know what I'm saying? Have y'all counted how many times I've, seen, I've said that this video? <sighs> okay, the struggle is real, guys. Um... Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, little stripes, big stripes. Your one pocket. Um, let's see what the back looks like. Oh, here it is all in one fabric. You've got this little detail where it's like a dart that opens up. Little angled hem here. Cute with leggings. Oh, here's the back. So the back has just one seam on it, one diagonal seam. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a dart that opens up. So it's not even a full seam. Fun pattern pieces on Marcy Tilton designs as well. But yeah, so three fabrics on the color blocked or print blocked one. It's almost like a jacket, like a jacket, a shirt jacket. 
All right, cotton shirting, linen, taffeta, poplin, and interfacing. Six buttons, extra small to medium and large to 2X on the sizing. These are the three amounts that you need for each contrast piece. And then if you're making them all together, you only need two and a half yards. And then one yard of interfacing. Kind of cool. All right, now we've got this guy. What is this, a jacket? Today's Fit by Sandra Betsina. She has her own sizing situation with letters that I've, I've never made one of her patterns before, so I don't fully understand the letter sizing. But nonetheless, that's kind of what makes her stuff special, the way that she's able to get you to fit it. But Mrs. Wide Collared Lapel Longish longish lined jacket do they really just use longish <laughs> with <laughs> with set in sleeves cuffs and welt pockets front of jacket is longer than back okay um a has top collar and top collar okay and cuff facing can be cut in contrast fabric b is for border prints okay so, I guess this is the top collar that kind of comes out here. These fabrics are so interesting. Really cool. Ne neat buttons, too. But you've got like a princess seam, welt pockets. You've got ex like a super long cuff. I'm going to see the front to back. That's a pretty fabric, too. Pretty straightforward on the design. Again, we'll look at line drawings here in a second. It's not that much shorter. I love the corduroy or velvet or whatever they're using for this contrast. That's a really fun detail. Oh, and look at the sleeve. That's really nice too. And it's like faced and, you know, really nice. I mean, is the back really shorter? This is just curved down a little bit, but I don't think it's that much shorter. Just the curvature part. Yeah, it's a great little jacket. Kind of, I don't know, the, the ex, like exaggerated lapel is a little bit, mm, I don't know. But again, 70s are, 70s are here. So yeah, it's kind of cool. It's different for sure. Let's see what fabrics they recommend. Medium weight linen, wool, or silk. So like a linen jacket. All right. Um, B is double border prints. Well, now which one was B? Oops. Oh, so the border on this one is the solid. It could have easily been flipped around. Okay. In that regard, I can see it in like one of those embroidered cottons, like embroidered denim. That could be really cool. Um, okay, so here's what I mean about her sizing. It is all in one, um, A through J, but I don't really know what that means. These are all in centimeters. So, oh, that's fabric. The, yeah, they're not giving us any garment sizing at all. So you'd have to look into what the sizing of Sandra Bitsina's stuff means. But sizes, what does this chart even mean? <laughs> this makes no sense, this chart. Okay. We're going to scoot on down to here and say that jacket A takes three and a quarter yards with the contrast. And then B, yeah, it's going to take a lot more because you're using that uh, double border print. And so you have to, your pattern Tetris is a little bit different. And then your interfacing and your lining. Do you think this is bust, waist, hip, and length? That, I bet, is exactly what it is. And then poor size J doesn't even get any numbers. They'll get in here and finish this, fix this stuff in a little bit, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm too too early on the trigger here. 
All right, we've got a wrap skirt with, uh, that has shaped bands, asymmetric front button closure with hidden snap, stitched hems, and sits below the waist. How cool is this? It almost looks like you didn't use a pattern at all, and you just took a tablecloth and wrapped it around you and called it a skirt, right? Super cool. I bet the line drawings on this are interesting. Okay. Oops. Um, oh, the contrast leather. Super cool. This has got to be some kind of like knit of some kind. Ponty maybe. They had a hard time with this. Look, they've got the ripples in the hem here. Although this is pretty. These little mitered corners. So pretty. Um, and then here there's a little bit of an issue as well. Nobody, nobody would notice that but me, <laughs> honestly, I'm the only one. Beautiful shaped waistband in the back. Just below knee length. Love it with a bodysuit like this. Super cool outfit. Super, super cool. Yeah, okay, so I figured the line drawings would be a little bit interesting. Um, it's basically a giant rectangle, but you do have the shaping here, which makes it kind of like a little bit scoopy, but all of this wraps around together and then buttons and buttons down. It's, it's hmm, how should I say this? It's not hard to sew. Like, it's not difficult, but you will spend a lot more time on this than you think. All these little angles and I bet the finishing on this is incredible. All right, yardage. Medium weight wool flannel. Can you imagine? I'd be like a I'd be like wrapping up in a blanket. That sounds lovely. Linen blends and then faux leather for the contrast, and then interfacing, and then four buttons. One snap, 8 to 16, 16 to 24, two yards for A, and then an extra contrast of one yard for a total of three yards. And then skirt B, where it's all one, is just two and a half yards. Always takes more to do color blocking or print blocking. That's cool. I like that. And now we've got these pants slash culottes. Man, okay. Mrs. Pants, high-waisted, very loose-fitting, through hip, have waist facings with boning, pleats, side seam pockets, invisible back zipper, and then B has this hem band. Okay, yes. Very high-waisted, boning through here, pleats, in here it's hard to see with the stripes but and then an extremely wide leg and then you can do a contrast on the bottom they use a bit more of a stable fabric here I can totally see this out of something drapier but here's where you can really see the boning it's all in here all those little like mounds that's the boning um, what is that what is happening here is that just like really bad Photoshop? What is that? Is she just bending in a way that makes the sweater kind of like poke out? I don't know. That looks so weird. Um, and yeah, this fabric here is obviously super stable, um, which I don't love. I mean, a drapey fabric, but then with the boning, I don't know. Do they have such a thing as, like, light boning? That sounds dirty. But you guys know you guys know what I'm trying to say. I mean, it's cute. It reminds me a lot of the red pants that I made um, that I posted, God, was that six months ago? Or what was it, this time last year? I genuinely have no concept of time. But those red high-waisted pants, those are Vogue. And they have boning in them. They just don't have a waistband. Which to me, this waistband is a little bit detracting. So. 
here are our line drawings. Looks like four plates across the front, four across the back, pockets, the band. Yeah, all right. Yardage, linen, twill, broadcloth, and sateen. Yeah, I guess they're trying to go with like a little bit heavier weight fabrics because this is a spring collection, not summer, and they're trying to differentiate, you know, with fabric choices, but I mean, you could easily make this for summer too. Um, one 11 inch zipper, two yards of three eighth inch boning, featherweight, featherweight boning. So see, there is a lightweight boning. <laughs> Eight to 16, 16 to 24, two and a quarter yards up to um, for the pants, A, and then that must be the yellow version. And then the striped version is three and five eighths of a yard. And then half a yard of lining. And then, geez, one and five eighths of a yard of fusible interfacing. And uh, that's it. That is the Vogue Spring Collection. What do you guys think? I'm going to try and find the lookbook, which I realize is now right here. And wrap this up. Kind of give you guys a reminder of what we looked at. But I want to know your thoughts on the Vogue Spring Collection. I think it's definitely helpful that the world is starting to reopen little by little so we can kind of imagine ourselves in situations where we'd be wearing some of these. But I also feel like with the exception of, I don't know, maybe like three or four patterns, a lot of them can easily be made for daytime, right? Especially toward the end of the collection. Um, and then the ones that are destined for something special are not necessarily ball gowns, you know? It's, you know, up to the wearer as to how dressy their lifestyle is, but... A lot of these things can be worn to different things that aren't necessarily evening events. So that said, I think they did a pretty good job with spring collection during a pandemic. But I would love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments section below. But that is going to do it for me today. You know what I'm saying? I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.